morning, when I went into the parlour with my books, I found my mother looking anxious, Miss Murdson looking firm, and Mr. Murdson binding something round the bottom of a cane, a life and limber cane, which he left off binding when I came in, and poison switched in the air. I tell you, Clara, said Mr. Murdson, I have been often flogged myself. To be sure, of course, said Miss Murdson. Certainly, my dear Jane, faltered my mother neatly. But, but do you think it did Edward good? Do you think it did Edward harm, Clara? said Mr. Murdson gravely. That's the point, said his sister. To this my mother returned. Certainly, my dear Jane, and said no more. I felt apprehensive that I was personally interested in this dialogue and sought Mr. Murdson's eye as it lit lighted on mine. Now, David, he said, and I saw that cast again as, as he said it. You must, be more, you must be far more careful today than usual. He gave the cane another poise and another switch, and having finished his preparation of it, laid it down beside him with an impressive look and took up his book. When, no, I'm sorry, we began badly and went on worse. I had come in with an, with an idea of distinguishing myself rather conceiving that I was very well prepared, but it turned out to be quite a mistake. Book after book was added to the heap of failures. My mother burst out crying. Clara, said Miss Murdson in her warning voice. I am not quite well, my dear Jane, I think, said my mother. I saw him wink solemnly at his sister as he rose and said, taking up the cane. Why, Jane, we can hardly expect Clara to bear with perfect firmness the worry and torment that David has occasioned her today. That would be stoical. Clara is greatly strengthened and improved, but we can hardly expect so much from her. David, you and I will go upstairs, boy. As he took me out, out at the door, my mother ran towards us. Miss Murdson said, Clara, are you a perfect fool? And interfered. I saw my mother stop her ears then, and I heard her crying. He walked me up to my room slowly and gravely. I'm certain he had a delight in that form of parade of executing justice. And when we got there, suddenly twisted my head under his arm. Mr. Murdson, sir, I cried to him. Don't, pray don't beat me. I've tried to learn, sir, but I can't learn while you and Miss Murdson are by. I can't indeed. Can't you indeed, David, he said. Well, try that. He, he had my head as in a vice, but I twined round him somehow and stopped him for a moment, entreating him not to beat me. It was only a moment that I stopped him, for he cut me heavily an instant afterwards, and in the same instant, I caught the hand with which he held me in my mouth, between my teeth, and bit it through. It sets my teeth on edge to think of it. He beat me then, as if he would, he would have beaten me to death. Above all the noise we made, I heard them running up the stairs and crying out. I heard my mother crying out, and Peggotty. Then he was gone, and the door was locked outside, and I was lying, fevered and hot and torn and sore and raging in my puny way upon the floor. How well I recollect, when I became quiet, what an unnatural stillness seemed to reign through the whole house. How well I remember when my smart and passion began to cool, how wicked I began to feel. <laughs>